Hello, everyone. Welcome to PayPod. I'm your host, Jacob Hollibaugh. And today on the show, we are diving into what, even though it has been around for longer than a lot of us realize, is still the new frontier of money and technology, and that is cryptocurrencies. We're going to be taking a look at crypto, at blockchain tech, and everything else these platforms has to offer, as well as discussing the best path or some of the best paths forward for bringing the old world of finance and this new world together, bridging those gaps, completing this transition process to truly integrate and adopt a lot of this new tech into our lives. To help explain this newer world to me and to you, the listener, I, of course, have brought an expert in the field here to help us. Join me on the show today is Daniel Stradaleramanos, founder and CEO of Renegade, your gateway to a partner-powered financial universe and the future of your finances. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you. Hi, Jacob. Thank you for you know giving me the chance to be on, on this show. It's actually my very first time I do something like this. So I'm a little bit excited and um, a little bit oh my nervous gosh. as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> even more honored that uh, you would have your first uh, attempt at the podcasting world be with us here on PayPod. Yeah. So thank you so much. <laughs> the pleasure is all yeah. ours because <laughs> as I spoke to you before we started recording this, you know, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, all of these new technologies do come up certainly from time to time on this show as we're talking about all the world of financial technology. We can't talk about those without talking about some of these two true new frontiers. But they aren't as used to a lot of our listeners and even me, myself, as some of the other things we do talk about would be. So I want to start with kind of a couple overview type of questions and topics here, which the first of which it pertains to you yourself. When did you first get interested in the world of cryptocurrencies and what was it about them or blockchain tech or anything else that attracted you to wanting to work in this world? Yeah, that was back 2014, when I, you know, really started to get into cryptos and, you know, to to spend some time doing research. And I was um, quite convinced immediately, but I thought I need to give it some time. You know, will this go into the right direction? Will there be some sort of adoption? Will people start actually use? It was Bitcoin back then, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else existed. And I was like, you know, will people start using Bitcoin? Will they trade it? And it got popular and popular. And 2015, I really, really got into, into the crypto space. And I'm in the crypto space ever since. And I'm a you know, huge uh, crypto believer. Um, and yeah, I, I do remember when I first read the, the Ethereum white paper, which was really, really amazing. Like I remember the, the moment, it was an amazing moment because um, you just... I realized immediately what potential cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology can or will have on our on our future. You know, mm -hmm. there, blockchain is here to stay. It's not going to go away and 100 percent it's going to change our lives forever. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those types of changes or some of those promises that like when you're reading the Ethereum white paper that you're getting the most excited about? What are with again, without you don't have to give us the full, you know, super long lecture, but the the kind of top line items, the promise of cryptocurrency, the promise of blockchain, the th the ways in which it can greatly mm -hmm. advance or improve our lives in the financial world or outside of it in in total. Yeah, especially um, with the Ethereum white paper, what I really really liked was the idea of decentralized autonomous organizations and DAOs. Um, which basically the idea behind is to tokenize a comp like maybe a company or whatever whenever you work together and then you have to to find mutual decisions um you can do it in a in a DAO like um, mm -hmm. that was it really was fascinating for me and I was like wow this is like so like crazy amazing um and that's what you know really fascinated me but also the idea of being in charge of my own finances. I don't have to rely on intermediaries. I don't have to rely on a bank. Um, it cannot be censored in some sort of way. It cannot take, nobody can take away my cryptos unless I give them my private keys and, um, or I store them in a, in a, in a, in a hot wallet and, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what I really found fascinating about cryptos that, um, you know, 
you're in first the first time you're really in charge of your finances. Yeah. And the way, again, I'm not the most educated in the field, but I've certainly uh, become in the last few years, much, much more, not just a believer in all of the many advances and the many benefits it can bring to us, but um, just kind of trying to learn more and more about it so that I can have conversations like this one. And the way I think of it a little bit and tell me if I'm wrong is just simply, it's a new framework. We didn't really have any new frameworks for how the financial world worked or for how ownership really worked for a very long time. Like we've had, you know, a company is either privately held and X amount of people own the percentage of that company, or it's publicly held and you can buy and sell shares in it on the stock market. And that was kind of the framework for ownership. And you had banks and their traditional system is the framework for finances and nothing, little changes were made within those over the years, but nothing actually like said, here's a brand new way to start fresh and do a fully different framework. So I always, when, if I'm ever speaking to someone who's kind of taken aback by it or thinks it sounds scary or doesn't understand it or anything, I like to start from just saying it's a new framework for financial ownership and ownership in general. Would I be, am I wrong in framing it that way as a framework to people? Mm. No, I think that's actually a really good way of, you know, describing it. Um, also, uh, how our financial world works, uh, as you said, it didn't change uh, a lot. Maybe it didn't change over centuries, basically. Like, um, it was always the same. Like, in the Roman Empire, they had coins and, and oh, sorry, I have to move <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Got those uh, I'm so sorry. Lights. We have, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have an emotion sensor in the office. Um, yeah, but nobody. there, you know, like currencies um, have been here forever and then nothing really changed. And I think this is on purpose. So this is um, the, it's controlled by a few and they don't want to give up control. They don't want to give up power. So they're just going to, yeah, let's, you know, it should stay like it is. And then and, and it's controlled by a few mighty, mighty corporations, banks, whatever, like governments. And um, that's crypto is going to change it. Um, and that's the very, very interesting part about it. Um, it's, um, I, as I said, that the good thing about cryptos is that you're going to be in charge of your finances. But it's also one of the big downfalls, I would say, because the question is, are, are, are human beings made to actually be in charge of their own finances? Um, maybe they're not like right i mean it, it it's a very it's very likely the likelihood is is pretty big that that they're that they're maybe shouldn't be in charge of their not in full charge of their own finances yeah. at least yeah, yeah at least every one of us is all in charge and that yeah it does then it it still has a little bit of collective to it where i might feel like i'm capable of being fully in charge of mine but i'm still impacted by the fact that everyone is in, is in charge of theirs and that can have effects on the market and everything, which speaking of that, uh, so definitely, especially given how long you've been in and kudos to you for being one of the early adopters way back when I'm, I don't need, I don't need to ask, but I'm sure that there was many beneficial times to you having been in on Bitcoin as early as you were and whatnot, but the crypto market in general, and is kind of the mainstream thoughts of crypto and kind of news stories and headlines and stuff. It's certainly been a little bit of a roller coaster over definitely the last few years during the pandemic and after. But even before that, there was a lot of highs. There's a lot of lows. There's a lot of moments where it felt like we might hit that kind of tipping point of mass adoption. And then, nope, never mind. We're not. Now there's negative headlines. Now everyone's scared again. So where do you feel like the crypto market is at right now as far as kind of mass appeal and that adoption curve of actually getting people to understand what it really is, what it's really trying to do versus just, you know, news headlines they see of, you know, if, yeah. whether it's really negative stuff, like it's all a scam or just really like, you're going to lose all your money or you're going to be a billionaire tomorrow, all the kind of exaggerated yeah. headlines. Where do you think right. the market actually is in truth in its adoption period right now? Yeah, I think we are. Are a very interesting point right now because um, governments realize that uh, cryptocurrencies they're not going to go away, and now they come up with their own um, 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 central bank digital currencies, um, and 
I don't know. Do you? I, I, I personally really, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Like because they will just, it will make you like very controllable. If they can shut down, like you, they can just take away everything with one, with one press of a button. They can block your wallet. But um, I, I don't, I don't. I think a lot of people think the same. So I can imagine a lot of people will realize that. Um, governments want to go away from um, from cash. They're they're not. They don't like it. Like that's you know, they they, they want to get rid of cash. So that's why they came up with central bank uh, digital currencies. Um, I think it's a very dangerous path, even um, because as I said, it, it it makes you very controllable, very dependent on 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 governments. Um, and right now, I think what's going to happen that um, governments will try to to regulate cryptos that are not CBDCs, not central bank um, and digital currencies, um, because they don't want to give people another path, you know? So if you have the choice, will I go into central bank digital currencies and, you know, making myself literally a, sl a slave, you know, to, 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 to governments, or am I going to use cr other cryptos that are not, as heavy regulated, maybe a little bit more um, anonymous. It's a big misbelief, by the way, that Bitcoin is not anonymous. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's, we're at this point where we're going to see in the next two or three years what, what path, especially regulators, are going to go. And I think there's only one, one path they're going to go that they're going to really, really, really regulate cryptos to death or tr mm -hmm. at least try to do it. Certainly. And yeah. And as you kind of referenced before, the reason maybe things haven't changed for so long or took so long to start changing is because those people that have all the power and that are running that aren't just going to give that up. It's not in our new human nature to be like, you know what? It was good. Yeah. We had a good run. Give it all up. Yeah. So yeah. I'm with you that one, the digital currencies they're putting out are missing the main appeal of the world of crypto and blockchain, which is the decentralized ownership. It's like, no, that that's still there with what they're doing, but that I would envision them incentivizing folks come over here where we're still in control, where we're still the beneficiaries of all of this. Um, and that that's going to be the biggest push for them. So we've talked generally speaking about the kind of whole market. Now let's actually get into renegade your company. Uh, when did the idea for renegade come about? When did you actually start this company and what was the initial goal or maybe, maybe the initial goal remains still the goal today. What is the goal or the purpose of the company renegade? Yeah, I had the, the idea for Renegade six years ago when, you know, I was handling cryptos already more or less in my daily life. And it was very, it was such a struggle back then to buy a Bitcoin. And it took me two days. Like, you know, I had to transfer money to a company and they're going to guarantee the price for, for 48 hours. And if the money didn't arrive on time, they, you know, would give me a, maybe a better or worse exchange rate. It depended on where the market went. And I was like, that has to change, right? And it was so complicated. And how do wallets work? Um, you really had to spend a lot of the time literally learning it, learning how to handle cryptos. And I was like, okay, this has to change. And also I I kind of realized that cryptos are gonna here are gonna be here to stay, they're gonna revolutionize um our financial market. Um, but yet traditional banking has to change but it won't disappear it, it, it won't dis disappear in the next 10 years it won't maybe disappear in the next 20 years but it will transition into a new form of 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 traditional and it won't be that traditional anymore but um and now with renegade we want to to help in this transition and in, in this trans transition in this process we that's our punchline uh, bridging the gap bridging the gap between traditional finances and the crypto world mm -hmm. for like the problem in, in my opinion is that the banking the traditional banking world they're tr hating cryptos because they're like their their natural enemy they're trying you know they're like ah, you don't need a bank you take you know peer to peer um you, you you don't need an intermediary so obviously they don't like that and all the hardcore cypherpunks crypto enthusiasts they're like oh the banks they're actually our enemies they're just you know controlling everything and and yeah that 
it, it's not the way we should go. Like they have both worlds have not only code to coexist, but they have to collaborate um, effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with Renegade. We in our app, um, you will able to to open an IBAN account. Um, it's um, how can I describe it? To in United it would be something like an ACH, ACH like account, like just like a bank account. I have to be very careful with the wording because we're not issuing um, bank accounts, yeah. but just you know to 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 understand a what it is. Account, which is get yeah. you. A wallet yeah, like or a holding, holding account. account. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a yeah, um, like a, you could actually call it. It's actually that's what it actually is—a wallet for electronic money. Yeah, yeah. So you can hold your euros in 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 this wallet. Um, we will issue a, a Visa debit card, and you can spend it in your daily life. You can pay your rent. You can get your salary, but also you're gonna have all the cryptos in this app. You're gonna have a crypto wallet, and you can easily switch between those worlds. If you say, okay, I have like I don't know. 2000 euros in bitcoin but i need it now you can just with one click sell it and you know have the the amount on your in on your fiat on your euro wallet immediately and then you can spend it with your card you can pay something or if you have some money left you can go into crypto into the crypto space yeah. the big picture behind it actually is that we want to go to especially to underbanked or unbanked regions like Latin America, Asia, that's our too big, especially Latin America. That's why we have an office in Madrid. And because we're going to go from Spain to Latin America. Um, because once, and that's the thing, you know, people are sending money abroad. There's a lot of Latin American people living in Spain. They're working here and they all send money back home. You have no idea. It's the craziest they send. Oh, my God. They have they said I'm so sorry. I this is it's gonna happen again. Why we um, got editors, it's no problem. Oh, oh yeah, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> cut that out, or it's honestly kind of funny anyway. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they send money abroad in, on the craziest, in the craziest way. And crypto could actually change that really easy. You can send money to everywhere in the world with one click with literally zero costs and whenever i speak to to people like i have a few venezuelan friends here in madrid who actually send money back home and i'm like why are you not just sending your mom bitcoin or ether or whatever and they're like i don't know how to buy it and my mom doesn't know how to sell it like that's even yeah. even if i would <laughs> know how to buy it i will never make like i cannot explain to her so that's what we want to solve this problem we want to have an easy Fiat, that's what you call it, Fiat on off ramp. People should have the possibility to easy buy cryptos and easy sell it. So um, we have like really good, good partnerships. Um, we just secured a partnership um, with a company. They're very, very strong in Latin America to on and off ramp. Um, so just imagine, let's call him Jose. Jose is from Venezuela. He lives in Spain and he can use Renegade. And we will provide him with an IBAN account. It's where he will get his salary. He's used he's used to handling um, you know money on his IBAN account. And with one click, he can buy let's say Bitcoin. And with another click, he can send it to his mom. And his mom just needs to download the app. Um, she will receive Bitcoin into her wallet, and then she goes to a local Seven Eleven and can cash it out in cash if she wants, yeah? or if she has if she has. Uh, a bank account in 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 Latin America, she can you know cash it out to her bank account and and pay her bills, um, and and that's what we want. That's what we want to do. That's you know one of the one of the things we really want to do and and to to make cryptos user friendly. Yeah, it's uh, it's really amazing and definitely it makes perfect sense that like I'm with you at the beginning of that is this is just where it needs to go. These sides need to be able to play together. Otherwise the only adoption there would ever be of the crypto world would just be there being two different worlds. And some people operate over here and other people operate over there. And that's not a great future either. And yeah. I then also though, understand why the financial worlds would probably push back so much on allowing anyone like yourself to bridge that gap because they see if they view this new type as a threat, they're like, yeah, we'll incorporate any new payment method you want as long as it's using the fiat currencies and it's running through our things. But this is a whole different level to them. So it all makes sense. And it definitely 
you know, for me just personally as a user, that's why like I own some cryptocurrencies, but I never even think about the idea of actually paying it. It's a simple, you know, I'm trading it to some degree and mostly just buying and storing it. But with something like this, where it actually be able to integrate into my life and also integrate into those other lives, because you give a great example with like, it's one thing for me to know how, but if I have to send money to my mom or dad, or just really anyone else that has no idea the current system that they have of like, okay, well, this is how you're going to go get a wallet. And then this is how you set up this. And this is where you go to purchase it. Yeah. And this is how you sell it. And this is how right. you can eventually get it to cash and then yeah. move that to a bank account to use on your debit card. It's like, no, 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 no one's ever going to do any of that. So this yeah. seems like a great system to actually be able to do that. What are, besides just them viewing crypto as kind of the enemy, are there other barriers, maybe technological barriers to linking the traditional financial services and institutions with the world of crypto or how, now that you've come along, are you finding a lot of resistance? Are you finding less resistance than maybe you expected in being able mm -hmm. to actually link those worlds and have them work so collaboratively together? Uh, it It is quite hard to find partners who, who are willing to work with you if you handle cryptos. Um, it's maybe not that hard to find like um, um, a partner who will issue IBAN accounts for your company if you start your, your, your new banking fintech startup. But once crypto is, you know, part of it, everybody's like, wow, oh, okay, ooh, this is, you know, we have to be careful because mm -hmm. maybe uh, you're going to get, you know, there's going to be people and they're going to launder their Bitcoins through you, your app and, and everybody's scared. So um the, the level of, 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 of compliance is, is higher once you handle cryptos than, than if you don't. Um, lucky enough, we found a really, really good partner um, who, who is really behind the project, who is not so much afraid of cryptos. Um, uh, it's a Swedish, it's a Swedish um, partner. They're, they're called Intergyro. They're issuing our IBAN accounts. They're issuing the, the Visa debit cards. Um, and that was a really big ac accomplishment already. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, generally, this is our, it's quite hard to find partnerships like that. Um, a big problem also is a problem, but it's the regulator, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, it's very, we are based in Liechtenstein. They're very strict. Um, we, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yeah, we. Yeah. it's very hard to keep them happy, you know, and um you have to be extremely careful about what the wording, you know, how, how, well, that's why I said in the beginning, it's not a bank account, you know, once mm -hmm. they will go crazy. If I call it bank account, like it's totally a no, no, it's forbidden. Yeah. Here's um, the rule book for bank accounts. Now follow all of that. Yeah. But right. Yeah. And the, the problem is like in, at least in Europe, um, people do not know the difference between a bank account and an electronic money wallet. They would everybody just calls it bank account, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is just because in your in your daily life you call it bank account, whatever it is, even if it's just like an electronic money wallet, but it's they would people will still call it bank account. Um, yeah, this is one this is one big hurdle that the regulator. Um, Liechtenstein is pretty crypto friendly. Um, I have to say it's 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 quite a good place um, to start to start your your company. Um, but yeah, that's that's the biggest that's the biggest things. Then also, yeah. I have to say, which is still a little bit um, complicated to handle, is is the crypto community actually, because what we are doing, we're trying to build a product that drives crypto mass adoption. We want to have an app for the masses. It's funny because you mentioned your parents, my mom, she's like my benchmark. If if she's able to use our app, if she's able, you know, I'm always like, mom, please test it. Can you use it? Do you understand the user interface, the user experience? And if she's happy and if she's having a good user experience, then I'm like, okay, like, you know, we can release it. It's like, you know, <laughs> proof by my mom. No, no, yeah. but seriously, like, um, yeah, if, it makes sense. If, if, yeah, if she can use it, then I'm fine. Like, then it's perfect because she knows nothing about technology. So it's a perfect, the perfect uh, testimonial. Um, but in the crypto community, we, we, we are selling our token. This is a way of, uh, for us, uh, to fund the project also a very interesting you know a really cool cool thing about cryptos how you can finance your 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 your, your startup it's a very new way of finance financing it um 
But within the crypto community, people are going crazy. Well, we're about to implement um, a wallet infrastructure that is like a non-custodial wallet. Non-custodial means that nobody holds custody over your wallet but yourself. Normally, that you have 12 seed phrases. That's the, like, you know, you can imagine it like as a passcode. Once you have those 12 seed phrases, you can access the wallet. So this is like your key. That's the key to your wallet. And there's, um, um, yeah, this, there's this, 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 this very strong belief in you have to have your 12. It's even possible with 24, but you have to have your seed phrases. Otherwise, you're not in, you know, you're not um, in really in, fully in charge of, of your cryptos. So there's like this company, they're called Defense. They're from France. And they have a, a very, very genius technology. It's called delegated signing, uh, where they take a, a, a scan of your face. And um, the 12 seed phrases, they're stored in um, on different servers. Um, I think they're hosting it with, with AWS, but I'm not quite sure. Um, and with your face, you will unlock your wallet. They will just get all the seed phrases from the servers, put it together and open your wallet. And people were going crazy over it. Oh, well, you can't do that. You can't, you know, introduce something like that to the app. I want to have my 12 seed phrases. And we were like, okay, like if that's what you want, then you're not our, our, our customer. Then you have to go somewhere else because people have to come to an understanding that if they, and everybody wants crypto adoption because all, all the crypto holders, they have cryptos, you know, they want the prices go up. Everybody's dreaming of uh, Bitcoin hitting half million dollar whatever like one million dollar in, in in 10 years i don't know and this is only going to happen if like a lot of people are going to start using it because then the, the you know the demand for bitcoin will be, be high and the supply will be very very low demand will go uh, will be will be high supply will be low and um that's only going to happen if we have like a technology like defense is offering because that's something people can actually use like imagine in the onboarding process of a, of, a, of a customer and he has nothing to do with cryptos but he's like okay i'm curious you know i want to start using it and then he will be on the screen at the app on the app and say okay this is your 12 seed phrases you have to write them down and and you better write them down by hand don't put them in, anywhere like in your computer because it can be compromised and if you lose it all your money is gone and all people will be like you go back to my mom she will be like oh my god I'm not going to touch it. Like she will never use it. She will never use it. And that's the first thing people are afraid. That's what I meant before. Like some people are not made. Like a lot of people are not made to be really fully, fully in charge of their finances. And a lot of people, you would be surprised. A lot of people do not, they don't want to have this responsibility. Mm -hmm. People are lazy. People are lazy. Like you have to always, you know, that's how it is. And, and so that we have to implement technologies and features like that and although it, it won't make hardcore crypto users happy but we cannot you know that's a, a little bit the problem in the crypto space because a lot of crypto projects are financing themselves through the crypto community so they want to please them and they all implement features that the crypto community is happy with and they can use it because they know how it works but the rest of the world who's not in the crypto space, they have no idea how to use it. And that's from my point of view, why there is no real mass adoption yet, because it's like this, this a little bit vicious cycle. It's, you know, just staying in the crypto space. Maybe some people even like it, you know, like being a small crypto elite and ah, like, you know, like we know something you don't and, uh, but that has to change. And um, yeah. Yeah. It's not living the, the values of the actual, the community or the initial values that were espoused of, you know, making it for everyone. It's kind of wanting to keep it insular and keep it for them. And it would make, it makes total sense that while there's plenty of pushback from the traditional financial world of like, you're trying to take what we currently have. There's then also the pushback from the extreme of in the community of don't give this away to other people or don't bring anyone else in, like only make it for us. Or it's going to be, if it's going to be different for us, we don't want anything to do with it. 
that that's interesting. And it makes sense now that you said it, but I wouldn't have thought before of that. There would be kind of equal pushback from both sides of like, yeah. you're being the one of, we should bring these together. We should allow them to work together. Yeah. And that both sides, there's plenty of people who are like, we like mm. working separate. We would like to keep it yeah. separate. Yeah. So very fascinating. Yeah. Um, you did reference then uh, the renegade coin. And I think you said, you know, the main purpose behind both yours and any in general is that's just a new method of being able to finance a company. Is there any other purpose to renegade having its own coin other than just the financing piece? Is there other hopes or ideas of how you could use that or just any benefits to having your own token system within your app or ecosystem? Yeah. So obviously the, the, the renegade coin is like a massive part in our ecosystem. Um, you can use it to send it, like you know, in within the app, and and, and people can on and off ramp it. Um, but also, for all the card transactions, we will get give you rewards in our own token. So imagine, like with the most basic card, you will get three percent in rewards. So imagine you spend a hundred bucks, you will get um um, um three three US dollars or euros or in whatever you spend it in um, back in yeah. Renegade tokens. So we want to incentivize people um, by using using actually our, our app, using our technology. So this is a perfect way to, to incentivize people. And it can go up up to 8% uh, in rewards. Um, but you have to stake, stake Renegade tokens. Mm -hmm. um, we came up with a really, really cool card um, card scheme actually. Um, you can build your own card. You can. Um, it's actually the first, the first time you can actually really, really build the card to your needs. Um, you can have airport lounge access if you want. There will be benefits. We call them benefits, uh, where you can get a refund. You can choose from a lot of um, 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 companies. You can have Netflix uh, refund. Uh, you can have Spotify refund. Uh, Disney Plus, whatever. Like you know. We're not offering it in the United States, but uh, it could be Walmart or or, or, or Target or whatever, uh, you know, Walgreens, I don't know. Um, and that's, you know, you can choose how many benefits uh, do you want to have each month. It can be up to, to eight benefits and you will be refunded 10. It's in euros because, you know, we, we launch in Europe. So you will be refunded 10, 10 euros each benefit. But you, to get it, you have to stake Renegade tokens. Mm -hmm. um, this is one, one point where you can use it. And also, you can just stake it to to generate the passive income. Um, we have a partner who will give out um, loans, so you can stake the Renegade coins into the loan book to finance the loans he's giving out, and and it will generate um, a passive income because obviously you will get a part of the interest rate. Um, yeah, and yeah. and that's that's one of the the, the big that's the big. Um, use cases for 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 the renegade token um yeah. also there will be the possibility to stake it actually into mining um so this will also be a way of of generate your passive income ideally the all the rewards people you know get by um spending money through the card they just use it to stake it and and by time you know build them maybe a nice a nice passive income yeah, love it. What uh so you mentioned, you know, you're in Europe, you're looking to go into uh South American markets. Are there what is the kind of goals as far as the geographies you're going to be in or hopeful to be in because I will admit I am salivating a little bit here in the states of like I would love for Renegade or something like it, but preferably yours. I'm talking to you here about it uh, to be available to me. It would definitely, uh, you know, get me to be much more of a user of these currencies and technologies. What are the plans for scaling it out? Is it just like focus on Europe and eventually South America first, or what's that? What's the geographic roadmap kind of look like? Yeah, um, we're not offering it in the United States. It's um. I think this is like a, um, now for a lot of crypto companies, it turned into almost a red flag right now. Um, the SEC is going crazy. Like you have the, the rules are like so strict. And it's like, um, if you, the thing is actually, I just, I learned it like uh, eight months ago that if you want to offer your service in the United States, you're not going to offer it in the United States. You have to offer it state by state. Yes. So, and it depends on what state you want to offer it. It goes up to crazy amounts of money. You're going to have to deposit somewhere or to pay for the license. So 
California is pretty expensive. I remember they've like, oh yeah, you roughly need a million, you know, to offer your services in California. And I was like, okay, then I have California. What if I want to offer it in Florida? I was like, yeah, maybe another 700 K. I was like, okay, let's go, you know, like yeah. Texas. And I kept going. I was like, yeah, and I was like, okay, like if you want to offer it in all of the United States, we're going to end up spending millions and millions and millions. So, and then also the regulation is, is pretty strict. Um, I think the the SEC is going a very very. That's what I you know said before. They're gonna they they're not a big fan of cryptos. They really want to usher in um, central bank digital currencies. It's more in their favor, obviously. And yeah. so we're not gonna offer it in 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 the United States. Um, um, and our main focus now is Europe and Latin America. And we want to expand to Asia as well because this is also a very very interesting market for cryptos. Um, that's, you know, that's our three main, geographically speaking, our main, uh, focus is our main focus. Yeah. And then, so looking at the rest of the roadmap you have on your site, you list out kind of like a roadmap of the, I think you have up to the next year, year and a half on there. What are the big, the biggest objectives for the rest of 2023, or maybe even looking out into 24, I saw on there. Apple Pay and Google Pay uh, integration, which stood out to me as uh, from my point of view, it seems like that would be really big wins um, and really yeah. big achievements to get on there. Am I right that those are going to kind of some of the biggest goals on that roadmap? Or are there any other really big objectives for the end of this year into next year that are kind of the next big, big hurdles and big kind yeah. of testaments to you're going to be successful coming up? Oh, we are about to to launch the app, actually the first version of our app and making the, the Ivan account and the, the card, uh, the Visa card accessible. Um, also quite short, like in maybe a month from now, we're going to offer Apple Pay and Google Pay. So this is a big milestone for us because yeah. it's very, it's going to be very easy to actually, you know, you download the app and within a few minutes, you have heart on your phone where you can start spending money. Also, I have to say to implement Google Pay and um, Apple Pay is really a good way for us to actually save money because just, you know, uh, every physical, physical card we have to send out, it's quite expensive. Yep. Uh, and so we're happy if people say, okay, I don't need a, a physical card and then, you know, ha Apple Pay, Google Pay is uh, sufficient. Um, but yeah, this is a big milestone. And another big milestone will be um, our listing at the crypto exchange. Um, we have secured um, two listings already. It's um, BitMart, and we are ready to sign um, a contract with Gate.io. Uh, we have it's one of the big tier one exchanges. We're really, really happy we have this this possibility, and um, yeah, that's gonna happen this year as well. And is that listing the Renegade Coin then? Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's for the Renegade coin. Um, it's obviously for all token buyers who yes. bought tokens until now. There's like the big moment they're waiting for because this will be the day where the token gets tradeable and yep. where they will see will the token price go up or will go down. And we are actually in a really good situation right now. Um, that I have the feeling like it's you know built. A bull run is coming up. It's just around mm -hmm. the corner. Um, Bitco Bitcoin halving is coming next April. It's not that far away. It's only literally a few months. Um, so that's a really good a good situa situation for us because um, to launch your token when there's a bull run coming up or like in a bull run, it'll just drag your token up. Like, you know, it just go up. And like, imagine you will launch your token on Bitcoin's all-time high that's going to be more of a tricky situation. Yeah. There's only one and place also, to go then. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That's it. And now we're, it's the other way around. Like, it's, you know. Um, and also we're really proud, I have to say, that we, right now we we sold tokens for roughly 1.8 million euros and we started last October. And literally, like, everybody told us, like, Daniel, you're not going to sell one single token. We're in the absolute bear market. Uh, the crypto, crypto is, you know, they're, like, destroyed. Nobody's putting money into cryptos right now. But yet, um, we managed to actually collect 1.8 million, which is pretty decent. Um, yeah. It's not this crazy amount, you know, you hear in the crypto space, like, 100 millions in uh, 30 minutes, and the project was sold out. And, yeah, we didn't manage to do that, but... 
Um, considering the market circumstances, it was a pretty, pretty good achievement. And it also shows that there's a huge interest in, in the app and in, in a solution like Renegade will offer. And so what I think, you know, from my understanding, if we manage to do to accomplish something like that in a bear market, and if we survive the bear market, then it's going to be easy for us, you know, in a, in a bull run. Yeah, love it. Well, uh, I'm definitely rooting for you and the company, and I definitely am rooting for the whole industry because I do think for all the reasons you laid out of why right now and maybe for a long time, the U.S. market is going to maybe be the hardest in the world for any of these things to enter and put up the most resistance. I kind of view it as, well, if we're going to be the last ones to adopt it here, then everyone else better start getting adopted quick so that if we're yeah. if we're last yeah. in line or the last to give in and let it happen, um, I'm looking forward to that day. So this has been really awesome, Daniel. It's been a real pleasure to get to speak with you and learn about you and the company. For those listening who may want to follow you or learn more about Renegade and just kind of keep up with everything the company and the market has going on, where would be the best place for them to go to do so? Maybe our social media, you'll find it on um, X. It's called X now, still not used to the uh, to the name. Uh, we have an Instagram profile and we have Telegram, uh, Telegram channels, and also our, our website, um, myrenegade.net. Um, you will find all the infos. Uh, once the app is ready, you will find it in the app store. And um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. Love it. And we'll link to those and more in the show notes below. And I was just thinking at and then before we hopped on to the interview, I was talking about my hopeful big European vacation next summer. And I was like, well, if I can't use it here in the States, maybe if I spend a couple months in Europe, I can get on the Renegade app and use it while I'm there. So yeah, definitely. I, I look forward to hopefully being able to do that. Well, Daniel, thank you so much yeah. for your time and knowledge today. I've greatly enjoyed it and hope to speak to you again sometime soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for having my first podcast with you. 